Hi there, I'm Maria Franklin. I'm a creative writing teacher and author and a poet. And this is the first in a brand new series that I'm recording each month. Um, it's called Writing to Help Yourself. Um, so it's like I say, it's a series on writing and recording for other writers who want to use the power of writing to help them work through uh, their own life events. Uh, if you prefer to read, then this is also available as a blog post on my website which is www.mariafranklin.co.uk um, if you are going to stay here and watch then be sure to subscribe to my channel as there's plenty more besides uh, this video for other writers to be inspired by so I plan to re, uh, release a video and a blog post uh, once a month in this series and this will be alongside the, the courses I put out there, the free courses, and alongside my regular uh, writerly witterings and uh, readerly ramblings releases. So the issues that will be addressed in this series each month will always be something I've had some personal experience of and have used writing to help me deal with it and get through it. Um, so if you have any suggestions of any topic you would like me to cover, then please either drop me a line or you can post into the comments below. Um, so anyway, there, there's no doubt of the therapeutic and cathartic properties that writing can offer us uh, and I often say we're incredibly lucky as writers to have this outlet available to us. As well as the benefits we receive as writers, there is the added benefit of our writing, being able to help and support other people as well, uh, should we choose to share it with, with others that is. So we can write about our experiences using lots of different methods. For example, we can use diary, uh, letter, poem, list, personal anecdote, and the list goes on. Um, and this series will consider lots of different approaches and give uh, different suggestions uh, for approaching your writing. So this first instalment is going to deal with the issue of empty nest syndrome, uh, the pain we can feel when our children leave home. I went through this 10 years ago when my eldest son left home and it really did take some time to feel normal again. Um, these weren't entirely normal circumstances though in which he left and if you're interested you can read the story behind our situation in my memoir which is called Don't Call Me Mum, it's on Amazon. Um, so my youngest son is now coming up to 19, therefore I guess it's inevitable that his decision to, to leave home could come in the foreseeable future, though secretly I do hope that it's at least a couple of years away. Um, so I can only speak as a mother here, but I am aware that fathers would feel similarly as well. Um, after many years, motherhood does become tied up with our identity as women and can bring feelings of void and age, um, maybe lack of purpose to name but a few responses, um, especially when the, the youngest child leaves. So hopefully these heightened emotions will be fleeting, um, but I recall feeling them so strongly that I needed my writing to help me get through them. Here's a poem that I have written that all parents facing empty nest syndrome might be able to identify with. It's called Rewinding Childhood. I will scatter your clothes across the floor again litter the bedroom carpet with cups and plates and refill your bin to overflowing before shouting turn it down as I wander past the closed door which you will have slammed after your tantrum raging hormones and raised voices contrasted with excitement at your first computer and Facebook account and a trip to town with friends as long as you're sensible Get on the right bus. Your mood will suddenly sullen and you'll roll your eyes. Dropped off around the corner, you'll pretend not to know me as you sidle into your first disco, stinking of links and hair gel. 
you will permit me one picture in your new high school uniform into which you've yet to grow. I will wrestle with tears through your primary school leaders assembly and even as the year six residential coach becomes smaller, I won't cry, I'm under instruction. But you will when you learn Father Christmas is me and the tooth fairy. Two pound will become one pound, then 50p. I'll cheer your sports days, school plays and push you on the swing. Teach you to ride a bike, fly a kite and try at everything. I will be your left, right, up, down and sideways. Run away from reception class when you wail. Tuck you inside my coat to keep you dry. I will answer every time you ask me why. I will never wish away the tiresome threes, the terrible twos and the sleepless nights. I will show you how to walk, laugh, use a knife and fork, how to sit up, roll and crawl and talk. Then I will hold your newborn form against me, breathing in your scent and warmth, knowing how quickly your childhood will pass. So now I'm going to offer some writing prompts that you can use to either anticipate the life event of your children leaving home or you can use it you can use these to deal with it as it happens or you can you can look back at it retrospectively perhaps addressing some unresolved feelings uh, so you could just as I've exemplified above you could make a list of your young person's milestones through life so far and then used in your list, write an inverted, that's telling the story backwards as I did, a piece of prose or, or, or as a poem. So that's one option for your writing. So you might want to be noting these down here. So a piece of inverted writing, but you'd be as wise to just get that list together first of the milestones you'd like to include. Um, obviously remembering to encapsulate some emotion in there because that's what it's all about. Secondly, you could write a letter to your young person, thanking them for the years you've spent together, referring to specific experiences. Of course, you don't actually have to show that it to them, it's per, just for your uh, benefit. You could make uh, what I call a living bucket list for yourself uh, of all the things you could do over the next year or a longer time frame, if that's what you prefer, now that you have more freedom available. For example, a holiday or learning something new. Um, then you could bring one of these items to life by visualising it ha happening, then writing it out in present tense as though it's actually happening. This is an activity I use quite a lot. Um, or you could write a diary entry of your happiest memory with your young person as though it's the end of the day when it actually happened. So just four suggestions there as, as writing prompts. So choose one of those or do all four. So remember you can write in anticipation, retrospectively, or if you are somebody experiencing this right now, then use it to help you right now. So thank you so much for joining me this month and feel free to post your thoughts uh, about this, uh, this video of, and this new series of writing to help yourself. Um, and let me know how you found the, the writing prompts. Next month's theme is going to focus on dealing with the loss of a pet through uh, writing. Um, I'll just mention before I say goodbye to you, if you if you want to support the, the work I offer to other writers, you can do so by visiting Patreon dot com that's p a t r e o n dot com searching for maria franklin um, and you can support me there which demonstrates that you're enjoying my work and want it to carry on um, and as thank you you'll be included on my live monthly uh, q a session to, to help other writers so you can throw your questions at me and you'll also receive a free book that i've written of your choosing after six months of membership so thanks again for joining me i hope you enjoy responding to the writing prompts if enjoys the right word given the uh, um, the subject of this so 
every month uh, from now on, certainly for the next year, writing to help yourself. So join me, let me know what you think and spread the word. And if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do and then you won't miss any of the offerings I put out on here. So bye for now and happy writing.